Now, sisters Melanie and Danielle Brown were inseparable growing up, sharing clothes, sharing secrets and looking out for one another. But during her tumultuous marriage to Stephen Belafonte, Mel drifted away from her family, losing contact with them for ten years. Well, thankfully, all of that has now changed and Mel and Danielle are closer than ever as they join us now in an exclusive chat. And welcome. And it's so nice to have sisters here on the sofa. Oh, it's really oh. lovely. <laughs> and growing up, that was always the case, wasn't it? You were five years sort of apart in age, but inseparable in, in every other way. You were very, Absolutely. very close. Yeah. Inseparable. We were, like, together all the time. And I used to babysit you a lot, actually. Yeah. Didn't I? <laughs> and you were, prote you were protective of her. I mean, even oh, at school, yeah, if you, you ever won't. got into any trouble at school, you had the right person on your side. Yeah, she was there at the school gates to sort anyone out. Yeah. Of course I was. Like, big sisters The original right. scary yeah. advice. Yeah. <laughs> so Definitely. how uh, how did it all go wrong, then? What happened? Oh, God. Well... I was in a 10-year marriage and it wasn't the nicest marriage at all. And I got very, very isolated from my friends, my family. It was really traumatic. In what way? Um, well, I was in a coercive, kind of not very nice relationship. Yeah, so... And one of those things that happens in that kind of relationship, you kind of get cut off from your friends and family. So it was very kind of emotionally was it a traumatic. Was it a gradual thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we were talking at the very beginning yeah, of yeah. my marriage, weren't we? Yeah, but not for long. When did you guys no. start to notice it from a family point of view, then? Um, just, like, a lot of the close friends and, like, people who worked for you, your PA and things, you know, that's always been there, kind of got... Pushed to one pushed side. Pushed to one side, so it was done gradual that way. And then we was the last ones to go, me, my mum and dad. And because I lived in L.A., my trips back to Leeds got less and less and less because, you know, my then-husband was very, very controlling and very kind of... It was kind of very mean that he did that to well, our he, family. He isolated you completely, really. That's yeah. How, that's how you see it. There were sort of friends that he was texting, pretending to be you, sort of saying not to get in contact. So you were very much on your own. There was, there was a phone call in particular, and I think this was just after you'd renewed your wedding vows in mm -hmm. Egypt, I think, if I'm hoping you're getting the timeline right. And you were pretty much sort of repeating things that he was telling, telling you to say. say. Which is and basically, I don't want to have any contact with you, which is, is not even my words So that's what I was to gonna... say to my mum and my sister. But that's yeah. what I was going to ask you. So when you're saying these words, what's going through your head at that time? Well, it's a, a thing of if I don't say it like this, mm. there's going to be a big argument and a big fight, and I didn't want that to keep on happening, even though it did happen constantly for 10 years. Yeah. So I had to pick my battles, and for me to be isolated from my family was a battle that I constantly battled, but yeah. I, I always lost. Mm. And so to be able to, you know, admit that and then start mending our relationship has been quite a healing process because yeah. I did get divorced, was it, two, about two and a half years ago? Yeah, about two years ago, yeah. And there was a lot of apologising that I had to do, especially to my sister and my mum. And I wrote a book about it, Brutally Honest, mm. yeah. just to try and for me to understand what I went through. Mm. And it's something that I feel really strongly about, to, to talk about and educate people mm. on what a healthy relationship should look like. Mm -hmm. But I'm also on a mission to heal what we've been through because... You, you were quite traumatised yourself, too, over yeah. the last ten years. Because yeah, we were so years. close. Mm. Well, that, cause, and that was the thing, because you had no contact and you're seeing your sister on the TV, you, you know your sister, well, you can see in her eyes yeah. that there's a sadness there. And yet, to not be able to call her, reach out to her, help her, must have been a horrible it's thing horrible. to watch. And, and lots of people say, well, why can't you just turn up at a house? Or why, you know, people didn't really understand or believe it. You know, well, she looks fine on TV, but... You just know when it's your sister that the blankness are in, in her eyes, her eyes mm. to me always look dead. Mm. So you'd know deep down she's not that happy. And when I would, me and my mum and dad would find out her phone number, find out her address, it'd all then be changed. She'd move Months home. Later, yeah. She'd change her phone number, she'd change her email, or you'd get a horrible email back saying, I want nothing to do with you. And then obviously later on we know it's not Melanie, it was him mm. replying on her email. <laughs> And Obviously, just... um, with something like this, we have to go to the other party. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so we have done that. Um, I don't like listening to this stuff, cos he's just going to deny everything, <laughs> well, which is crazy. I am going to have to read it out. You yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, uh, he says, uh, this whole thing is a fraud. 
Mel lived and worked in other parts of the world for months at a time. How could I influence who she did and didn't call? I couldn't. I proved in court documents that Mel had constant contact with her mum and sister, and I have other emails and text messages to refute what they are both saying. Absolute rubbish. So we have to read that, obviously. Yeah. And obviously, I know that's difficult for you to hear. Um, well, that's why I teamed up with Women's Aid Charity, because they're very supportive with, with women and men that I've been through what I've been through, because it is, you know, I lost 10 years of being with my sister, being with my mum. They lo you lost out on my kids, I lost out on your kids. Yeah. And, and it's still not stopping. And you know what, if, if what I've said is a lie, then sue me. I've already, my book has been out since November. And my book is not just my words, it's 14 other people's words mm. that have witnessed the, the abuse and the turmoil and emotional roller coaster that I suffered for 10 years. What do you say to uh, other women who will be watching this now and maybe would recognise a relationship like that? Well, in the back of my book, there's, I, I do 15 signs of what a relationship like mine looks like. And I found out that it, it happens more often than not. Mm. There's actually an epidemic going on right now in Britain where women, a lot of women are either stuck in that relationship or they've gotten out and they're still being harassed and somewhat abused on some level. And it's something that we do need to talk about and educate. And I think it's really important that kids and men and women know what a healthy relationship looks like and what it feels like. And that's why we're actually doing a talk at um, the Grand Theatre in Leeds, August 25th. Mm. Me, my mum and my sister. Yeah. And, and my daughter, Phoenix, because um, it's important to talk about it because yeah. it's such a taboo thing. I suppose and we all know somebody that's been through this. It's hard for, for you guys. Now you are, thank goodness you're back together. Thank goodness you are back. And she's about to have a baby, family. so I'm I really know. excited. You look amazing. I've not just had a few pies. <laughs> <laughs> Bump envy. But it's, um, it can't be easy to, to put it all completely back together again. To no, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's hard. It's up and down. It is a roller coaster because it's, like you say, it's a 10 year gap of no contact at all and a lot's been said and done and happened in 10 years but i think we're, we're good it's a healing process and we're, we're good we're probably closer now as well you know because of it and there must before. be a, a sort of a sadness there as well for what you've lost in those 10 years the things you haven't seen i mean i know your kids are now really close and that's really lovely but yeah. you would have missed out on those milestones i imagine this way this baby is so important because you'll be there I'll be right there. Right <laughs> Not there. the birth. <laughs> Not the birth, but I'll be waiting outside. <laughs> no, I mean, I did get really angry about that because a lot of time has been lost. Mm. And I'm trying to do catch up and make up right now. But, you know, I think we, we, we just talk about it and that's what we do yeah. between me, my mum and Phoenix, who's 20. And yeah, and I think working with Women's Aid, you know, you realise how much it happens to other people and how much we can actually help mm. and how much we can just educate and start talking about it really and not make yeah. it such a thing, thing that it's, it's a hush-hush. Mm. How did your mum feel? Oh, she's so happy. I bet she she's is. So she's so happy that we're together. over the moon, absolutely. And just to have all the grandchildren together and, you know, her two daughters together. And that's the thing, it's like there's only us two. Yeah. So it's like I felt like an only child almost for 10 years mm. and just, you know, but now... It's back on track. We're and, back. And, and Mel, for you, I mean, time... Life is good right now. You're it's in a really, really good, good place. You've got your sister, your family back. The huge success of the tour, having oh, the girls so all together fun. again. My gosh. And it was nice that you were there because she was there for, for most of my tour, wasn't Yeah, you? the first one as well. And my mum. Dublin. And my kids is it's just it's good times i feel like now life is getting better and better and better because mm. i don't live a lie i don't live live that horrible relationship of guilt and shame and embarrassment and i'm i'm just uh, yeah healing myself okay. along with her well it's lovely to see you both good luck with the baby Thank I know. You. <laughs> right, you can have the baby now. Yeah, okay? I've been holding it in <laughs> <the day. laughs> Thank you both Thank very you much. So Thank much. you so much. Thank you.